Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today we're going to talk about glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, also known as G6PD deficiency. Make sure to watch our other free educational videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School, and listen to our podcast episodes on iTunes. A 34-year-old man presents from Greece with back pain, fatigue, yellow eyes, and yellow skin. Of note, he was recently treated with an antibiotic for a skin infection. What are possible causes for this person's presentation? Now, because I mentioned that we're going to talk about G6PD deficiency, you may be thinking that G6PD deficiency is the only cause for this patient's symptoms. Remember that it's important to form a list of differential diagnoses. In addition to G6PD deficiency, you should also consider drug-induced hepatitis, autoimmune hepatitis, and even unrelated issues such as viral hepatitis, to name a few. However, for the sake of this discussion, we will focus on G6PD deficiency. Before we can talk about this very common disorder, we need to understand how the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase works. G6PD stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. G6PD is an enzyme that plays a vital role in the pentose phosphate pathway and helps cells fight off oxidative damage. G6PD removes two hydrogen atoms from glucose 6-phosphate to create 6-phosphogluconate. These hydrogen atoms are transferred to NADP to create NADPH plus a hydrogen atom. Within RBCs, there is a molecule called glutathione. Glutathione reduces oxygen radicals, producing alcohols and water. By reducing oxygen radicals, glutathione prevents oxygen radicals from destroying the cell. When glutathione is oxidized, it is used up and forms glutathione disulfide. In order for glutathione to be recreated, NADPH and the hydrogen atom reduce glutathione disulfide to create two molecules of glutathione again. In G6PD deficiency, the lack of G6PD prevents the production of NADPH and thus glutathione cannot be regenerated. If glutathione is not available to reduce oxygen radicals, then these radicals cause severe cell damage leading to cell death. Now interestingly, G6PD deficiency is common in areas where malaria was endemic. Plasmodium falciparum, the infectious organism that causes malaria, requires RBCs to replicate and survive. Diseases that affect RBCs like G6PD deficiency and sickle cell disease result in decreased lifespans of red blood cells, thereby decreasing the sites available for malaria to proliferate. As a result, G6PD provides an advantage to individuals against malaria. Unfortunately, this advantage can cause many complications for the individual. Areas that are commonly affected include Africa, the Mediterranean, and parts of Asia. G6PD is passed through the X chromosome. As you can imagine, males tend to be more affected than females, as males only have one X chromosome. So if they receive an affected X chromosome with G6PD deficiency, they will have the disease. On the other hand, females have two X chromosomes, so if they receive one affected X chromosome, only 50% of their RBCs may be affected. Generally, females with only one affected X chromosome will largely be asymptomatic. Those individuals that are affected by G6PD deficiency vary to the degree to which they are affected. The severity of hemolysis or RBC cell death is categorized from class 1, the most severe, to class 5, who are asymptomatic. Even with G6PD deficiency, there are variant forms which include the Mediterranean variant, which causes severe hemolysis in Caucasians, the A- variant, which is the most common form of those of African ancestry, and which is generally not as severe as the Mediterranean variant. The A- variant produces RBCs with normal G6PD enzymatic activity as reticulocytes, but the activity declines with the age of the red blood cells. So how does glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency present? It commonly presents in two ways. The first is several days after birth when a baby becomes jaundiced. 
Generally, there is no jaundice at birth, but the jaundice occurs several days later. The inciting cause for triggering the episode of hemolysis with G6PD deficiency is unclear. Jaundice in the neonate is treated like many other diseases that cause neonatal jaundice with phototherapy to prevent kernicterus. Kernicterus is when, due to high levels of bilirubin, the bilirubin deposits into the gray matter of the brain, leading to neurological dysfunction and altered mental status. In addition to neonatal jaundice, G6PD deficiency can present after exposure to various medications or foods. There are two classic examples of presentation. The first is when someone is taking primaquine during treatment for malaria. Primaquine leads to increased oxygen radical production, and in those with G6PD deficiency, they will develop hemolysis since their bodies cannot deal with the oxygen radicals appropriately. The other classic example is called favism. This is when someone eats fava beans and they have G6PD deficiency. The fava beans promote hemolysis in people who have G6PD deficiency. Keep in mind, there are many other medications that can cause hemolysis and G6PD deficiency, such as a component of Bactrim called sulfamethoxazole. Also, severe infections can also precipitate hemolysis due to G6PD deficiency. When those with G6PD deficiency undergo hemolysis due to some exposure, they present with a sudden onset of jaundice, pallor, and dark urine, usually a few days after their exposure. If you take a sample of these individuals, you may see several findings. One classic finding is identifying Heinz bodies. Heinz bodies are abnormal protein collections in red blood cells. You will see an RBC with bluish colored dots after special staining is applied. In addition, you will see helmet or bite cells, which are RBCs that look like pieces of their membrane removed. In the right clinical context, with a consistent peripheral smear, you can have a strong suspicion for G6PD deficiency. But remember, there are lab tests that can help as well. The simplest test to diagnose G6PD deficiency is the fluorescent spot test. It is the most sensitive test. Blood of the patient is added to the solutions of NADP plus and glucose 6-phosphate. If the RBCs have enzyme present, the NADP will be converted to NADPH, and the solution will glow under UV light due to special tags that recognize NADPH. If the solution does not fluoresce, then there is glucose 6-phosphate deficiency. Other tests include the methemoglobin test and certain point-of-care tests that can be used in the clinic. Now, even though we have tests available to screen for and to identify G6PD deficiency, the timing of performing these tests is vital. During a hemolytic event in G6PD deficiency, the cells that are most deficient in G6PD are the ones that are hemolyzing. So if you test the blood of these patients during an episode, you're actually testing a largely unaffected or mildly affected population of cells. Testing during an episode can give you a false negative result, thereby missing the diagnosis of G6PD deficiency. On the other hand, if you test when a person is asymptomatic, then the affected RBCs will still be circulating, allowing you to obtain more accurate results. So remember, to time your testing correctly, to prevent missing the diagnosis. The treatment of G6PD deficiency in the setting of hemolysis is to remove the trigger that led to the episode and to provide supportive care. Well, that was a brief review of G6PD deficiency. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, give it a like, share this video with your friends and classmates, place your comments down below, and most importantly, subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool and Facebook at iMedicalSchool. Make sure to listen to our podcast on iTunes to hear our episodes on the go. This is Dr. K, and I'll see you next time.